name I pray in the church said, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, welcome members, partners, covenant friends. Praise God. Another opportunity to receive the word of God. Amen. I trust that you're being blessed and I encourage you to continue to send emails of encouragement. The word of God is blessing you and you've been edified during this time of, of what the world is calling a pandemic and crisis. Amen. Thank God I've got so many encouraging emails from so many people that uh, are telling me what the word of God is doing for them. So continue to do that. Amen. We're life TV. Just go to our website. and There'll be places there to not only email, but also places to, if you want to give online, uh, if you want to uh, purchase other uh, CDs or watch other CDs, actually you don't have to purchase them. You can go to YouTube. Anything that we miss on live streaming, you can go to YouTube. And uh, you can also get these messages that are being stored, praise God. Just type in Word of Life Tabernacle. So, we're going to get right into the Word of God. Hallelujah. I have an exciting message that I want to teach about. One of my favorite subjects. And I want to teach the subject, uh, faith that worketh by love. Faith that works by love. Because uh, we talk about faith, the just shall live by faith. We talk about faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We understand that it's impossible to please God without faith. But also, there's a very important force, or what I call fruit of the Spirit, that is called love that supersedes faith. The Bible talks about that faith works by love. In other words, the love of God is what makes faith work. And as we go with these love scriptures, I don't want you to get so caught up in this word love. It's a loose word that we use, faith, work by love, and somehow we equate it to human love and feelings and emotions. Love is not a feeling. Love is a person. God is love. Love is a decision. And when we talk about love, we're not talking about human, uh, filio, uh, love that changed, love that's based off a of condition. We're talking about agape. Faith that works by agape love. And, and uh, we want our faith to work. And I see so many faith giants and so many people who want to, you know, talk about you got to have faith and you should have faith. But yeah, their love life is shot. Their love life is not operative and they wonder why their faith is not working. Uh, I'll cr quote you a classic scripture, which uh, we all talks about Mark chapter uh, 11, verse 22. 23 says have the faith I have faith in God I have the faith of God for whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou uh, removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not die in his heart but believe those things which he said he shall have whatsoever he said and we go on to say you know that things that we desire when we pray verse 24 believe that you receive them and you shall have them but verse 25 says and when you stand praying Forgive if you have all the gifts in it that your heavenly father may forgive you of your trespasses. In other words, if you do not forgive, then your faith is not going to work. You can shout to that mountain all day long. That mountain might be sickness. It might be disease. It might be lack. But if you're not walking in love, praise God, if you do not forgive, if there's offense or unforgiveness involved, what Jesus was teaching, that faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. He said, when you stand praying, forgive. In other words, he's not talking about physical posture when you stand praying, like I'm standing here now. He's talking about when you take a stand. I'm standing for my healing. Well, he said, forgive. I'm standing for my finances. I'm standing for my children and their salvation. He said, when you stand praying, forgive. He was still teaching on faith. So faith works by love. Yeah, you can speak to the mountain, praise God. But what is going to cause your faith to move the mountain is it is supported by the love of God, which is a fruit of the Spirit. And the Bible says against such, there is no law. So let's look at this simple scripture. We're talking about faith that works by love. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. Just one verse of scripture here. Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse Six, we're talking about faith that works by love. Galatians 5, 6 says this, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Amen? Faith which worketh by love. If you're at home, just say that out loud. Faith which works by love. 
Faith which works by love. Everybody want their faith to work. Faith is a force. Hallelujah. Jesus called it your servant in Luke chapter 17. They said, Lord, increase our faith. He said, if you have faith as a grain of, of mustard seed or sycamine, you would say to this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up and be thou cast into the sea, and it would obey you. What? The tree? Yes, and your faith. Faith is your servant. He said, which are you having a servant will tell him to come in and eat at the table and will not rather tell him first go into the field and serve me. And after you serve me, then you shall leave. Faith feeds off of the word of God. It will work. It'll work for you. It'll move mountains. It'll move sickness and disease, praise God. It'll cause things to change. It is the creative force of God in the beginning. When God created the earth in Genesis, the first chapter, the Bible says he began to release his faith. Hebrews 11, 3, through faith, we understand the world's refrain by the word of God so that everything we now see were not made of things that do appear. So faith works, hallelujah, but it works by love. In other words, love is the fruit of the spirit, the most important fruit of the spirit because God is love. We need to go back and look at sometime over there, Galatians 3, uh, excuse me, Galatians chapter 5, and then look at verse 22 when it talks about the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. And it'll say the works of the flesh are plural. And then it names nine things. And then it talks about, but the fruit of the spirit, what's this, is the fruit of, and then it names nine things. Love. Joy. Notice it said love is the first thing. Joy, peace, meekness, temperance, faith. Well, wait a minute. The works of the flesh are? Why is it the fruit of the Spirit are? No. It said the fruit of the Spirit is. And then it names love. In other words, God is love. Now, out of love come temperance. Out of love comes joy. Out of love comes faith. Love is what makes long suffering and all those other nine fruit work, praise God. So it's talking about a blended whole, that the main fruit is love. It's just like a tangerine, and you can strip away the peeling, and, and you have one section is love, and one section is faith, and one section is long-suffering, and one section is goodness, and one thing, but it's a blended whole. So love is what causes all those other things to work. Faith, work it by love, because God is love. Ain't nothing going to work if God ain't in it. Hallelujah, that's the revelation here. Now notice he said, for in Christ Jesus, if any man be in Christ, are you saved? Are you born again if you're in Christ? What he's saying is if you're born again, circumcision or uncircumcision don't mean anything. In other words, circumcision was a sign, the cutting away of the flesh uh, based off of Old Testament law. They were circumcised the eighth day and that was a sign of the covenant. He said, that's the Old Testament. He said in Christ, it's nothing on the outside. There's no mark on the outside. But in Christ, if you're in Christ, Faith, which works by love. Hallelujah. Jesus said all men would know you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Not if you wear a nice suit. Not if you drove an expensive car. Not if you, we think that's a sign of a Christian. It's prosperity. He said, no, the fruit is love. Hallelujah. A new commandment I give you. St. John 13, verse uh, 34, and, and I think it's 35. A new commandment I give you that you love one another. And he said, by this, what? Love, all men will know that you are my disciples. Praise God. So faith works by love. And if you're not going to walk in love, you're not, your faith is not going to work for you. You're not going to see any re real results in your life. So many Christians want to speak to mountains and shout at devils and bind this and bind that, but they can't talk to anyone. They can't speak to anybody. Praise God. They're holding all in unforgiveness, and yet Satan uh, convinces them that you can, you can be in strife and still, praise God, release your faith. But the Bible says where there's envy and strife, there's confusion in every evil work. You open up the door. It'll stop your faith from working, praise God, because God is not in it. God is love. That's the most predominant fruit, and that is the love of God. We're going to look at that in 1 Corinthians, even there, over there where it says, uh, do I have the tongues of men and angels and have not love, have faith to remove mountains, but have not love, it won't profit me nothing. So you can see there he said, hey, 
You can say you have faith to move mountains, but if you don't have the love of God, it won't profit you nothing. Then he goes on and he talks about, uh, you know, do I have all mysteries? And he talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And Paul was teaching, and that's chapter 13, but in chapter 12, he said at the end of it, yet I show you a more excellent way. And he started talking about love. In other words, none of the gifts of the Spirit mean anything. Do I have the tongue speak with tongues of men and angels? And have not love, I am nothing but a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. In other words, it's just a bunch of noise because God ain't in it. And you can be speaking this stuff and praying prayers and releasing your faith. But without the love of God in it, it's just a bunch of noise because God is not in it. So faith, work it by love. Now look at this from the Amplified. Very interesting. From the Amplified Bible. It says, for if we're in Christ... If you'll say you're born again in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision count for anything. But only faith, I like this, that is activated, energized, and expressed and working through love. Faith is activated and energized and put to work through love. So he said in Christ, if you're going to see results, you're going to need more than just faith. You're going to have to be committed, rooted, and grounded in the love of God. You're going to have to keep the love commandment. And this is not just talking about our love for one another. It's talking about the love, faith in the love that God has for us. Amen. How are you going to have faith in God if you don't believe he loves you? If you believe God is holding something against you. A God is, is still holding some type of wrath again. That's why people, it's hard to trust God for healing if you believe that you've done something that has displeased God and he don't love you. It's hard to believe God to meet your need, release your faith for anything if you believe that, oh, well, you know, I remember, you know, way back there, you know, I got that abortion. Or, oh, I lied. Or, I did that. Whatever it is, it's going to stop your faith because you don't believe God loves you. And how are you going to have faith in a God who you don't believe loved you. How are you going to have faith in anybody who you don't believe loved you? That's, that, I mean, that will destroy a marriage. Baby, I love you. No, you don't. I just don't believe you love me. I told you I love you. You didn't tell me today. Oh, my God, you done told me 25 times. But they don't, they don't believe you love them. Well, there's no trust in that marriage. Why? You can't trust somebody you don't believe love you. This is really simple. I don't want you to miss it, praise God. And the more you understand how much God loves you, the more your faith grows in God. Because it, the Bible says faith is, watch this, activated. I like this word, in energy, activated. That means that you could have faith, but it be lying dormant. You have faith to move mountains, faith for your children, faith for healing, but it's not activated. That means it's, listen, it's not active. It's just lying dormant. Love is what makes it active. It's almost like we, uh, we're with Citibank. I have a Citibank card. And uh, when I get my Citibank card, they'll send me a new card. And maybe the expiration date expires. And they say, Pat, uh, Mr. Diggs, uh, I have a little thing. Say, call this number and do activate the card. Now, I can get that card and not call that number even though I have the power. I mean, my God, I think my, my, uh, my credit a uh, 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 level or what they, they give me a line of credits go up to about $75,000. I, I got $75,000 if I need it. But if it's not activated, it's not doing me any good. I can go, praise God, I can charge money, I can, uh, for, for money, uh, I can get food, I can get a car, I can get a rental car. I, can do all, I have the power to purchase. But if I don't activate that car, it's just lying dormant. And we got the power of God. The, the love of God is the most powerful force in the universe. God is love. And against us, there is no law. But if it's not, what activates love? It's activated by faith. And there are a lot of people whose faith is lying dormant because they either offended, they're mad, they hold it all in unforgiveness. And so that's the trap that the enemy used to stop people's faith. I don't have to attack their faith. Just get them out of the love wall. Amen. Or get them doubting the love that God has for them. And the more you begin to understand how much God loves you, then your faith becomes activated and energized. It's energy now. It's active. It's moving. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, you get a, a statement on your credit card. And if there's not been no activity, it's zero because you didn't use it. 
Matter of fact, you won't even get the statement if it's not activated. Why not this happening? Why? You won't activate faith. Hallelujah. So faith works by love. It's activated by love. Look at this statement. I like this. I want to keep this thing real simple. Praise God. Flashlight work it by battery. Hmm? And faith work it by love. I'm going to say that again. Flashlight work it by batteries. And faith work it by love. And God is love. In other words, if God is not in your heart, if a God may not in it, I don't care how much you release in your faith. I don't care how many words you speak of faith, praise God. The love of God must be supporting that faith in order for it to be active and to move mountains, praise God. And that's why a lot of people are not seeing results. You got a lot of churches won't even fellowship with one another. You got ministers won't even speak to one another. You got people on the choir and this and jealous of that. That's why the in, it's a trap of the enemy, praise God, to, to cause people faith to be stagnant. And that's because the enemy will put pressure on them to get them out of love. But he says, flashlight, work it. By, by. I mean, everybody understand that. If you don't have no batteries in the flashlight, it ain't going to work. Well, then the same way that the batteries make the flashlight work, then love makes your faith work. Hallelujah. Watch this. Without battery, flashlight don't work. Without love, faith don't work. I don't care what the devil, I don't care whether he speak to me or not. Praise God. I'm just going to pray and believe God. No, you in, you in, you're not in love. Your faith is not working. So we got to commit to the love life first. The love walk first because God is love. And remember, love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. We're going to talk about this. Romans 5, 5 says the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. God, love is in us. If you're born again, God is love. But you must allow that love to control your emotions and your feelings. Notice the love of God has not been shed abroad in your flesh. You're waiting on a feeling. I don't feel like forgiving her. I don't feel like going out and eat with them. I don't feel like speaking to her. Well, then your faith is lying dormant. It's not activated. you got to go beyond your feeling. Realize the love is a fruit of the spirit. And when you don't feel like loving, it's when you better love, praise God. You love by faith. You forgive by faith. Because love is what makes your faith work. Now watch this. You ever seen batteries get weak in a flashlight? What happened? The light get weak. Weak batteries, weak light. Weak love, weak faith. Matter of fact, it not only do it get weak, it'll get to where it won't be no faith. It won't shine at all. So what we need to do is make a decision. Praise God. God is love. I'm going to keep myself in the love of God like Jude said. I'm going to love, and, and, and not only am I going to love one another, I'm going to believe and put faith in the love that God has for me, because God is love. And the more I understand how much God loves me, the Bible says love never fails. God will take care of me. God will make sure that there's no type of evil befall me. I ain't got to worry about the pandemic. I ain't got to worry about the coronavirus. I don't have to worry about layoffs and I don't have to worry about unemployment because love, faith works by love and God is love. And if I keep myself in the love of God, my faith will be working. And I know God loves me. And when, when, when one thing about love, love never fails. God will never fail you, praise God. I want you to look at this statement. Then it's difficult then to have faith in God, <laughs> if you don't believe, he loves you. <laughs> this is not deep stuff. That's why I'm taking my time because I, there are people struggling. And they're struggling and wonder, well, why haven't God done this? And where's God? And, and why haven't my money come in? And, and just seem like my job situation, home situation. Well, they, yeah, God has failed me. God has let me. Why is God allowed? Listen, don't let the enemy convince you God is your problem. God, if it had not been for God, you wouldn't even be here. Are you listening to me? The Bible says every good and every perfect gift come from God. Do not err, my brother. Don't let the devil convince you God is your problem, that he's bringing evil, that God has failed you. Hallelujah. The Bible, here, it's difficult to have faith in God. How are you going to have faith in God to heal you if you believe God put the sickness on you? How are you going to have faith in God to meet your need if you believe God is trying to teach you something and humble you, praise God? 
I've heard people say, you know, God will give you that house and, and you might burn it down to humble you if you get too high. God will give you a car, but, you know, if you get too high, he'll blow it up. No, that ain't my God. Proverbs 10, 22 says the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and add no sorrow with it. If God gave you the house, sorrow don't come with it. If God gave you the car, sorrow don't come with it. So how are you going to trust in a God that you believe is against you? So then your faith will be in the work. The more you understand how much God loves you and cares for you, it's difficult to have faith in God if you don't believe that he loves you. Look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. It explains exactly what I'm saying. Now notice this. You got to know God loves you. He loves you when you're right. He loves you when you're wrong. Now where we get messed up, well, how can God know he might not have pleasure? Just like when your children disobey you. Do you have pleasure in that? No. No, I don't. I want my son to obey me. You want your children to. It don't give you pleasure, but praise God, you don't get a, 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 a knife and cut their throat and kill them and go bury them in the backyard. I don't love you no more. No. You didn't have any pleasure. God is love. He has decided to love you. And there's nothing you can do to stop that love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son when you was in the world god loved you if god loved you as a sinner how much more do he love you now as his very own blood-bought child so the more you understand and put faith in that love watch watch this scripture then the more your faith will grow it'll begin to work why we have we know understand recognize and we are conscious of by observation, hallelujah, and by experience. There are things I know that I should have been destroyed. Things that I know shouldn't have happened in my life. Because I came up short, but God, by the experience of love, I know that love by experience, praise God. And watch this, we believe, adhere to, and put faith in and rely on. Listen to those three things. Do you believe the love? Do you believe God loves you? Well, I ain't read my Bible this week. I haven't prayed. Now, I didn't ask you what you did. It's not based off of your words. It's based off of Jesus. It's based off of grace. God so loved the word that he gave. How much, how much, he said, do you believe? At how much faith are you putting in God? That love, that he loves you. And rely on. I'm relying on God. I know he loves me. Praise God. He going to pay my bill. He going to keep me safe. He's not going to let no type of sickness, disease come. Why? Because God loved me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And that love is a force field. That love is a protective force. We put faith in and rely on the love that God cherished for us or has for us. God is love. God is love. God don't have it. He is it. We have it until you make us mad. Then it, it leaves. But God, his nature is love. God is love. Hallelujah. He loves you when you're right. He loves you when you're wrong. He loves you when you're up. He loves you when you're down. He is love. And he that dwells and continues in that love dwells and continues in God. And God dwells and continues in him. God is love. You got to get that revelation. And where is God? He's right here on the inside of me. So that love is in me. Now it's up to me if I'm going to let it flow out of me. God loves me. I remember when God was calling me into the ministry and uh, all the things he was calling me to do that was worldwide. I was just a little young kid out of high school and God was giving me visions about the world and building buildings and, and, and I, it was like, you know, the enemy would always, well, now why would he do that for you? You, you haven't done this and you're not that and, and you, you, you're nobody, no big nobody. Your mama, you know, she cleaned people's house and your dad at work, you know, in the laundry mat and, and after all, you didn't do that. He was always trying to get you and I to doubt the love that God has. But I just believe that love. I believe now God loves me. He would, if, he, if, he, if he didn't love me, he wouldn't have saved me. Hallelujah. Praise God. He loved me. I'm going to keep dwelling in that love and standing in that love. And the more I begin to put faith and rely on and the love that God has for me, the more my faith grew in him. I began to trust God for bigger and better things. That God wanted me to have a better life. Then all of a sudden, as I read the scripture, it began to confirm everything I was believing. I didn't believe the lies of the devil, praise God. Hallelujah. He said in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts are good and not of evil to give you a good 
final outcome or expected end. So God has good thoughts, good plans to amplify, good plans for my life. And so year by year, I just start believing that love. Hallelujah. And what has happened, because a lot of people have low self-esteem, because some people have never really been loved unconditionally, because some people thought they were in love with someone and got hurt or disappointed or went through divorce. That's why a lot of people have a hard time getting a revelation of God love because they equate it to human love. But God love is, 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 is not ordinary love. It's not of the flesh. It's, it's, it's unconditional. It's not about how you look. It's not about how much money you have. It's not about uh, uh, what, you, what, what you do or what you don't do. How, it's not about how big or small you are. How, it's unconditional love. It's agape, praise God. And the more you put faith in that love, I'm telling you something. When you begin to believe the love God has for you, all of a sudden your faith will rise up. You know what? God loves me. He's going to take care of me. God loves me. He's he going to make sure, praise God, there's no foreclosure on my house. God loves me. He's going to take care of my children. If he loves me, then he got to love my kids. So why am I tossing and turning, praise God? He that keepeth Israel neither slumber nor sleep. Notice your faith grow the more revelation you get about the love that God has for you, praise God. Amen. And then here, in the, let's look at St. John's Gospel. This is powerful, man. I mean, I just decided when I was teaching this, I said to myself, my God, what has sustained me over the years? What has kept me preaching regardless of what anyone did, said, thought, all types of faults, failures, low times in my life. And I had to go back and remember it was the love of God, faith in that love that God loved me. When I got this revelation, praise God, and you need to start confessing that. I'm going to show you a, a scripture that if it wasn't in the Bible, it might be hard to believe. But because you're a believer and I'm a believer, we're going to believe what the word of God says. Now, this is, this is powerful stuff right here. Look at St. John's Gospel, chapter 17. We're talking about faith that works by love. And the reason a lot of people are weak in faith is because they have let the enemy convince them that God don't love them and God helped this against them. Something that happened way back in 1999 or 2011 or two. He still, you remember you did this. You did. And most of the time, it's not so much God holding stuff and not forgiving people. God forgave you the day that you, the day that Jesus was raised from the dead, you were forgiven. Did you realize that? You weren't forgiven when you accepted Jesus Christ. He had already forgiven you. That's the day you accepted it. And so as people won't forgive themselves, they listen to the accuser of the brother, the enemy, and he comes with condemnation and guilt. And people struggle with forgiving themselves over stuff that God has no, the Bible says his sins and iniquities, he remembered them no more. There's no more record of it. And here in St. John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse, wow, 20 to 23. Now I want to remind you <laughs> that Jesus is praying not just for his disciples that day, you know, Verse 1 says, and these words spake Jesus as he lifted up his eyes into heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. So he's praying. But look at verse 20. Let's pick it up in verse 20. Let's find out who he's praying for. He said in verse 20, neither pray I for these alone. He was talking about those disciples that was present that day. But for them which shall also believe on me through their words. So that's got to be me and you. Because you and I either got saved directly, indirectly by the words of one of these men by these books that we're reading, praise God. When it was the apostle Paul, Peter, it was something in this book. Hallelujah, you accepted the word of God and you were born again, not of, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the word of God. Amen, written by one or more of these men. He said, I'm praying for not only these, but them who should believe on me through their words, that they may all be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may also be one in us. That the word, that, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory that thou hast given me, I've given it to them. That they may be one even as we are one. Listen to this. I and them, you and me, thou and me, that they may be one in us. We are all mingled together one in Christ. Hallelujah. That they may be made perfect in one that the world may know. Watch, here it is. That thou hast sent me and has loved them 
as you have loved me. Thou has loved them as thou has loved me. You have loved them the same way that you love me. You love me. God loves you the exactly the same way he does you. Oh, wait a minute. Now, hold it. Now, dear, I mean, he, he was the son of God. Now, who are you? Behold, now we sons of God. See, we doubt the love. God loves you exactly the same as he does Jesus. I, I dare to say even more, but I'm not going to go that far. I'm going to at least say equal because he said that they may know what's happening. Faith in the love of God. Because how are you going to believe that God going to do something for you if you don't believe that he loves you? God didn't leave Jesus in hell. God raised him up. God heard, heard it answer his prayer. When you begin to equate yourself on the same level with Jesus, same love that God has for one of his sons, the firstborn son, he has for me. That's when your faith will begin to rise. Hallelujah. He raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. He didn't raise Jesus up here because, well, now I just love him a little more. But now they down here know it's the exact same love. And that was the key to Jesus' ministry. That's how he was so bold in his faith to lay hands on the sick, to rebuke that he knew God loved him. And all he knew, if I speak the word, the father would do the word. Well, if you speak the word, the same father who loved you would do the work. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, faith works by love. A revelation how much God loves you. And you don't, you shouldn't let anybody. You need to get up every morning and say, you know. And I began to do this years ago. God loves me the same as he does Jesus. Now, when you say it first time, it's like, oh, it don't even register. Like, that's crazy. That's Jesus. I mean, all oh, what you, you don't read your Bible. You don't do this. You remember you did that. I mean, the enemy, God loves me. But just keep saying it because the word said it. God loves me the same as he does Jesus. God loves me the same as he does Jesus. God loves me the same as he does Jesus. God loves me the same as he does Jesus. God loves me the same. Well, he wouldn't fail Jesus. He wouldn't, let, he wouldn't forsake Jesus. Well, wait a minute. He won't forsake me. See, what's happening? Your faith is growing because you understand. It's working by revelation of the love God has for you. Now, the enemy will do everything he can to convince you God does not love you. He'll remind you every fault. He'll remind you every failure. He'll, I mean, he'll do everything. He's called the accuser of the brethren. But there's a scripture, I think it's Jonah 2.9, that says, They that, lie, that observe lying vanities shall forsake their own mercy. If you listen to the lies of the devil long enough, you'll, just, you'll start believing God don't love you. But notice here, you need to be confessing. Every morning, all during the day, God loves me just as much as he does Jesus. God loves me the same as he does Jesus. It's right there in the Word. And, it's, and the more I said that, it began to get in our spirit. And the revelation of that came alive. God does love me the same as he does Jesus. Why? Well, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loved me when I was in the world. If he would have loved Jesus more than he loved me, he would have kept Jesus and let me go to hell. So he had to love me because he gave his son. That's equal love. How many of you are willing to give up your son or daughter for someone else? That's equal love. And I know this is so simple, a lot of people miss it. That's why they struggle with their faith. That's why they struggle. That's why they think, well, God won't do it this time. God won't hear my prayer. They're doubting the love that God has for them. And here it is right here. He says, Father, that they may know that as thou has loved them, that you love me. Look at this from the Amplified. Praise God. How, we don't hear too much teaching on the love of God. But your faith is going to work by revelation of understanding how much God loves you. Neither Pray out for these alone. Do I pray? He said. It is not for their sake only. So that means, praise God, that I make this request. But also for those who will ever come to believe in and trust in, to cling to and rely on me through their words and tears. Well, that's me and you. Praise God. He's praying for us. Why? That we all might be one. Just as you, Father, are in me. I in you. That they also may be one in us. So that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me. And have given them the same glory. I've given them the same glory. We have not fallen short of the glory of God. That was the Old Testament. This glory is in us. Christ in me, my hope of glory. Okay? Hallelujah. He said the same glory and honor which you've given me. That I, I've given to them that they may be one even as we are one. And I in them, you in me. In order that they may become one perfectly united. 
that the world may know and definitely recognize that you've sent me in that you have loved them even as. Woo, the same. That's what that means. That you have loved. You've loved them even as you love me. Jesus said that. Jesus just said that he won't. Every Christian to know the same love that you have for the Son of God, the one that healed the sick, raised the dead, paid the price for our sin. Hallelujah. God put us equal with Jesus. And the more you put faith in that love, the more your faith will grow. When you begin to believe the love, faith, work it by a revelation of how much God. That's why Jesus had ultimate confidence in his Father. Hallelujah. Praise God when he went to Lazarus' tomb. Amen. God won't fail me. And even though there was stench and he had, was in grave clothes and deterioration had set in his body, rolled the tomb away. I mean, confidence. Where's the, that's, that's somebody. God loves me. Hallelujah. And then he said it. Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I'm not praying this prayer because, because I doubt that. Because of these unbelievers that's by. I, thou hast heard me and you always hear me. Lazarus, come forth. And when he spoke the word of God, hallelujah, God honored him. It's the father that dwells. Well, that you have to believe God loves you. God is not going to fail me. That's why every time, praise God, that he was bold in his prayer life. Because he have a revelation of the love that God has for him. And when you get the same revelation that he loves you equal, you will pray boldly. You will speak the word of God boldly in your, your life, over your children and over your finances. Amen. But it's hard to trust anybody. If you don't believe that they love you, praise God. So I'm going to make this simple statement here. God loves you. Exactly. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, man. I, I don't pray. I don't say God, man. I did this. I, 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 I sinned. I did. Yeah. I, God knew all of that. That's what love is. It's unconditional. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just need to receive it. God loves you exactly the same as he loved Jesus. Now faith work it by a revelation of that love. The more you begin to bleed the love and confess. Now start by confessing. Everybody needs to start waking up every morning at least 5, 10, 20 times a day and increase. God loves me the same as he does Jesus. God loves me the same as he does Jesus. God, what's happening? You, you, it's hard for your mind. Your mind is trying to reject, but it'll get in your spirit. God loves me just like he does Jesus, praise God. So what in the world? Perfected love. We're getting this cast out fear. So hallelujah. I'm going to get in my car. I'm going out here. Yeah, I'm going to put on my mask, but ain't no virus going to come on me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. I don't care what's happening on the job. God's going to supply my needs because he loves. You see how they get to affect your faith? Hallelujah. Faith works it. Work it by love. And God loves us exactly the same as he does Jesus. That's why he raised us up together and gave us joint seating with Christ. And you'll read it in the book of Ephesians. He said the reason he did it was to satisfy this great love. Even God rich in mercy. Even when we were dead in trespass and sin. To satisfy this great love. He raised us up. And it's going to take some time for your faith to grab hold of that. But you need to start. It start by confessing it. You need to confess it. Nothing is going to be manifest in your life unless you confess it. You need to say 10, 20, 30 times a day, God loves me the same as he does Jesus. Why Jesus said it? Was he lying? Well, then you need to bring your faith up to that level and it'll cast out fear. Look at this scripture. Romans 5, 8, Amplified says this. This will prove it. God, but God shows and clearly proves his own love for us. By the fact that while we were yet still sinners, Christ the Messiah died for us. He proved this love. If God didn't love you as much as he, at least equal as he does Jesus, then he would have kept Jesus, praise God, and let us all go to hell. But he, he proved this love, but said, no, 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 you go. You become the sacrifice. You become the sacrificial lamb. Let's, don't, don't slay them, praise God. I love them. I care for them. I, I have good plans for their life. And he gave you, he proved this love. Love is an action word. Love is not just words. It's an action word. And God put his son into action. He put him to death because he loved us the same. And he became the firstborn among many brothers. Now, 
So I would encourage you to start sin every day. You'll be surprised how your faith will begin to grow if you just say, God loves me the same as he does you. God lo- now the enemy going to say, ah, who you? No, 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 no. My sheep hear my voice. A stranger, he won't fall. Just keep saying it until it get in your spirit, praise God. Look at Romans 5.5. 5. Romans 5.5. 5. We're talking about faith that works by love. Now, why is this so important? Because there are a lot of people who think God is failing them. They look at all the deaths, the pandemic, and all the different economic downturn and, and job situation. And, and maybe, you know, there's been inconveniences here. Maybe you've had to change your lifestyle and the kids out of school. And, and the enemy begin to whisper, where is your God? Where's God at in all this? I mean, if God loved you, why, why, did, why did so-and-so, you might have had a loved one who was contracted by the virus that's died. Why God let your cousin die? Where's God in all of this? I mean, why, 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 why did they lay you off? Why are you on short time? Why, 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 why did you lose your job? Why, why is your business going? If God loved you, uh, it, the enemy will use everything that's going on in the world today to try to convince you that God don't love. That's the number one way to rob you of your faith. Because faith works by revelation of that love. Hallelujah. And yet God has said, hallelujah, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Lord, I'm with you to the end of the world. And I know God loves me regardless of what's going on around me. It does not change. God is love and his love remains the same. And I can have confidence in God regardless of what's going on in the world. Praise God. Because the Bible says that, that, that we've been given a spirit that cries, Abba, Father. That's my daddy. My daddy love not a spirit of fear. I don't have to fear. We've been given a spirit that, that's, that cries, Abba, Father. That's my daddy. And that might be another reason why a lot of people struggle with the love of God. Now that I'm on it, you might have had a bad relationship with your father. And because you was abused by your father. Because your father never held, held your hand. Because your father never took you to the park. Because your father never took you to Disney World. Because you had a bad. Then when I preach on the love of God, you don't get excited because immediately all these negative images of this earthly father comes up. But you got to take your mind beyond your earthly father and realize there's a heavenly father that loved you before you were, while you was in the world. God so loved the world that he gave. He loved you, matter of fact, before you even knew your father. He said, before you was formed in the belly, I love you. I knew you. The very hairs of your head are numbered. And you have purpose. Hallelujah. And I, he called us from the womb. Amen. There's a love greater than your heavenly father. When your father and mother forsake you, Jesus, uh, Peter, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, David said, then the Lord will take me up. You never heard about uh, 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 um, David's father following him. And as a matter of fact, he wasn't too high on him anyhow. When God sent him down there and said, take your sons down there before Saul and one of them going to be anointed king. He didn't even have David in the lineup. He's still out there with the sheep. He had Ehab and, and all these big boys and he's going through and, and then Saul is going down looking at all these boys. Is that the one? No, that ain't the one. Uh, and so Samuel said, is that the one? Samuel said, no, that ain't the one. Well, is that the one? That, and I mean, he wasn't even in the lineup talking about not loving him. But just because you've been rejected by your, he- by your earthly father, there's a heavenly father that said, I'll never reject you, praise God. And so Samuel said, well, so, uh, you know, they, they, you sure this out? Well, there's little old David out there, but he out there with them stinking sheep. Bring him in. And when he brought him in, he anointed him with oil, praise God. Because even though his natural father did not love him, thank God there was a heavenly father who said, I got a good plan and good thoughts for your life. You gonna have a good final outcome. And that's why you need to bleed the love. You need to go beyond all the abuse or lack thereof of all the drama and all the hurt and pain that your natural father caused you and realize there's a heavenly father that called you. Joseph went through the same thing with his brothers. The Bible says that it was tall in his father's house. I mean, they lied on him. They said that he was, he was, he was dis- murdered or killed by a wild animal and, and took, took his coat of many colors and threw him in a pit and he went through slavery. And you know the story, praise God. From there, he was brought out of slavery, went to Potiphar's house, accused of rape, accused of murder, went to prison and there. I mean, well, you know, well, well, why is all this happening if God would love you? No, the Bible says he kept dreaming. You got to believe the love that God has for you. 
Make a long story short, he was praised. God brought up out of prison and brought up to Pharaoh. He interpreted the dream and became second to Pharaoh. And later on in his life, there's something that Joseph said. He had two kids. One was named uh, Manasseh and the other Ephraim. He said, God, I'm going to name one of them Ephraim. He said, because God has made me to forget the tall in my father's house. You got to let it go, the abuse. This, you got a new heavenly father, praise God, and he loves you. And you got to stop believing that. He said, God made me forget all about what my brothers did. You remember at the end of that story? All that they did and when they came up and bowed down before him, he could have took their life. But he said, no, am I in God's place? He said, what you meant for evil, my heavenly father worked for my good. Praise God. God loved me. Hallelujah. Even though y'all guys are tripping. And then the second, he said, he named him Manasseh. He said, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land where I was afflicted. And you can bear fruit right in the midst of the place. People that hurt your heart, people that came against you, you can still have a fruitful life when you start believing the love that God has for you. Amen. That, that's just for someone because that's why a lot of people, do. this don't sound exciting. It can be because you, you can't get past the hurdle of the natural abuse in your natural family. But there is a heavenly father who loves you. And then not only does he love you the same as Jesus. Let, let's look at this. Romans 5, 5. This is, man, man, these are, these are powerful scriptures. Romans 5, 5. We're talking about faith that works by love. And the more you understand that love, the more your faith is developed in your heavenly father. Romans chapter 5. Look at verse 5. Wow. It says here in Romans 5, 5. And hope make it not a shame. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given us. Notice the love of God. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Not in your flesh. I don't feel like loving. They made me mad. I don't feel like. No, it ain't. Easy. If you're waiting on your flesh. Then, then it won't happen because the love of God is that it went in your spirit. God is in there. And what I'm trying to show you, God has given you and I the same capacity, the love as he does. Hallelujah. To forgive like him and love like him unconditionally. Agape is right here in my spirit. The Bible says the love of God has been shed right in our heart by the Holy Ghost. It's down in there. But you know how that love is? Is you're going to control how much of it flow out of you. Just like when you go to the faucet. You can turn on the faucet and there's just a little trickle of water start dripping. Because you're stingy with it. Or you can turn it wide open and there'll be a force. That's how the love of God is. You can let the love of God flow through you. The Bible says perfected love cast out fear. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. Listen, but a power, love, the spirit of love. It's right here, love, agape. And I put faith in that love, hallelujah. The same love that he loved with Jesus with me is the same. Now he put it in me to love you and love him back with, praise God, hallelujah. The love of God has been shed in our heart by the Holy Spirit. What you mean by the Well, the Spirit of God, God, the Holy Spirit. What, know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? God is right here, hallelujah, if you're born again. He said, I'll take out the stony heart and give you a heart of flesh that is responsive to the touch of their God. Now, look at this statement then. So when we were born again, God put his love, agape, in our hearts. Hallelujah. The same love, supernatural love, the supernatural ability to forgive. Now, if I get over in the flesh and someone hurt my feelings or someone, you know, disappoint me, it's going to be hard to love. Amen. But no, it's in my spirit. And so I depend on my spirit. I have the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy. Same love that God love is in me. I can forgive anyone. I can be just like Jesus. It don't matter what you do to my flesh. You might crucify my flesh. You might hang me on a cross, praise God. You might drive a spear in my side. But he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they don't even know what, they do, what they're doing. That wasn't coming out of his flesh. It was coming out of his spirit. Now, why do the enemy try to get us out of love of God? Because faith, work it by love. So he attacks your love life. He either try to attack you to get you out of love or get you to doubt the love that God has for you. So we were born, when we were born again, God put unconditional agape 
in our hearts. Hallelujah, praise God. Now listen to this other statement. That is very powerful. As Christians then, wow, we have the same capacity. Woo, I didn't say we'd do it. To love just like God. To forgive just like God. Why? The love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. I didn't say, uh, you got to develop. Remember, we talked about faith. It's activated. It could be, you know why you always been lying dormant. You have the same capacity to forgive. The same capacity to love your kids. The same capacity to love your wife. The same capacity to love your brothers and sisters. The same capacity to love God. The first and great commandment is to love God with all thy heart. And the more confidence I put in that love over the years, the more, the more my faith has grown. God loves me. So when God began to call me to build million dollar buildings, and that fear would try to say, well, what if this happened? What if, what if not? I knew God, love will never fail. Love was behind me. God won't let me fall. Now unto him that's able to keep me from falling. See, perfected love, we'll read it, cast out fear. Because fear has torment. The reason you're fearing because you're thinking, what if God failed me? What if I don't get the money? What if I catch the virus? What if I lose my house? What if I lose my job? No, love never fails. And God is love. And God is right here. And I got that same love in me. Hallelujah. So if I stay in love, I know my faith is out there working on the mountain, bringing the money in, praise God, changing my children because faith, back to where we started, work it by love. Hallelujah. My faith is working, causing the manifestation of the healing power of God to, to, to flow into my body. All the enemy got is two things, either try to get me offended or get me to doubt God's love. If I don't do those two things, 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says, love God Never fails. Love will always find a way. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. When I was sinking, arise no more. It was the love of God that brought me out of the streets of High Point. Praise God, clean me up from drugs and alcohol and pills and dope. Praise God, purge my body of all of the drugs and alcohol. Hallelujah. Praise God, changed my life. Gave me another chance. Hallelujah. Love. Love, God's love cannot be strained. That's what the prodigal son was all about. Give me my inheritance. And he said, okay. And he went out and spent all his money on righteous living. Drugs, alcohol, prostitutes, women. Had lost everything. And after years of partying, he found himself in a hall pen, slopping halls, and the enemy is telling him, God don't love you. Look at all the mistakes you made. Look at what you, you might as well kill yourself, commit suicide. But the Bible says he came to himself and said, wait a minute. See, don't bleed the lies of the enemy. In my father's house is joy. In my father's house is, I will arise. You can pick yourself up from anything, praise God. I don't care how far you miss. I don't care how far you gone down to the bottom. And go to my father's house. And I can just see the enemy. Oh, he going to get you. Oh, he going to cuss you out. You don't want to go home. But the Bible says when he saw him, the father, uh, from a fall, that means that he had never left this position. All that time, all that sinning, all the failure, all the party, God never leaves his position. Why? Love never fails. The Bible says when he saw him, well, that means he was already looking, expecting him. He said, my God, that's my son. Go get the fatted calf. Let's have a party. Somebody go get the best robe. Go get the ring. Put it on his face. For my son that was once lost is now found. See, love never leaves this position. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. God loves you. And notice he was trying to get him to destroy his faith. But he had faith in his father. And what I like about it, when he got back there, he said, I will say, I've sinned and I'm no longer Able to be worthy to be called thy son. And the Bible says that he didn't even listen to that, praise God. He said, get the fatty cat. He said, my son that was once like he still called him son. There's relationship and then there's fellowship. He broke his fellowship, but his relationship, that's my son. You're a son and daughter of God. Regardless of, pick yourself up, hallelujah. I don't care where you are. Get back in church, Amen. The Bible says then as Christians, then we have the same capacity to love just like God and to forgive like him. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. 
says, we are given, whereby given to us exceeding great and precious promises, talking about this, this word, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Uh-oh. The divine, the divine nature. We partook of God's divine, which is God is love. So that same love, the same DNA, hallelujah, that God had that same capacity. We partook of it, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through love. Thank God I have the divine nature of God. Not just my father's nature. I've been born again. Your natural father might have been a robber, a mugger. He might have been a hateful man. Might not even be born again. But we claim our father's nature instead of God's DNA, which is love. We partook of the same, so we have the same capacity to love. Praise God. And I made up my mind, I'm going to keep myself in the love of God. And when I keep myself in the love of God, my faith is going to always be working. It'll be out there getting the money. It'll pay the bills. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the enemy will try to get you offended, get you out of that love walk. That's why Paul said, and sometimes we forget this scripture, what it's really saying. He said, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any other creature which shall be able to separate me from the love of God. What do you mean, sir, get me out of love? Well, if I stay in love, he said, through, oh my God, I, it feels like we are, it's counted as lambs for the slaughter, man. Love is not a weakness. He said, it feels like I, I, I'm being slaughtered like a lamb. But he said, no, I'm more than a conqueror. Well, just through that love, him that love. If I stay in love, I'll win. And I'm not going to let nothing or no one separate me or get me out of the love of God. Why? Faith works by love. My faith is being activated. And you can't afford to have your faith, praise God, not working. You need to be working on your kids, on your money, every day. And so we need to understand we got to commit to the love life, praise God. And we have the same capacity to love just like God. Look at 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Little John. So the more I understand how much God loves me and that I commit to the love life, and I confess daily God loves me the same as he does Jesus. God loves me the same as he does Jesus. That sounds so strange to your brain when you hear. But when it gets in your spirit and it hits you, glory be. God loves me just like he does Jesus. So he's going to take care of me. Hallelujah. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear me. Why? God loves me. He's going to take care of my children. He's going to take care of me during this pandemic. He's got, hey, he's declared the end from me. God loves me. Hallelujah. That, that, your faith just keep rising and growing. Here in 1 John 4, verse 18 says this. 1 John chapter 4, little John chapter 4. Now I want to remind you, this is the aged John. This is him, new of the book of Revelation. This is the same John in the gospel of John. Now he had to grow in love. He wasn't always called the apostle of love. This was the same James and John that when they went into the city, Jesus did the preacher. They didn't receive him. John, James, and John said, you want us to call fire down? They wanted to burn everybody up. Jesus said, you don't know what man of spirit are you of. Huh? I didn't come to destroy men's lives, but to save men. In other words, they had to grow in love just like you got to grow in this love. It's got to be perfected in us. We got to grow in this faith. There's different levels of the revelation uh, that we have of God's love in our life. But this is the most powerful force on the universe. Look at this. So here's the age of John. And he says in 1 John 4, verse 18, he says this. He says, there is no fear in love. Mm, there is no fear in love. Well, God is love. Mm. And where is God? God is in me. The love of God has been shed abroad in the heart by the Holy Ghost. So God is in there. And there is no fear in love, but perfected love casts out fear because fear has torment. And God is love and he don't want you tormented about a bill, about a virus, about death or nothing else. Perfected love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that fear does not make perfect in love. Now let me help you with this phrase, perfect in love. Let me help you with this phrase because a lot of people think that's talking about loving your wife or loving one another perfectly. No one, no human being has the ability to love perfectly. I don't care how much you think you are a great lover, Casanova. 
I don't care how long you think it will how long. And I see people all the time. Hey, hey, Pafe, how you doing, Sugar Plum? Oh, Pookie Bear. And, you, you know, and it just looked like they got the perfect relationship. You'll be surprised what happened to Pookie Bear and Pafe if you make a man at home. All hell breaks loose. So what am I trying to say? I'm not trying to yeah, We want to perfect God's love for one another. But the only person who can love perfectly is God. That's what it's talking about. God loves you perfectly. He says there is no fear in love. Well, that's God. Well, God is in me, so there's no fear in me. Because perfected love, watch this, cast out fear. When you understand God loves me perfectly, you mean all the mistakes I made, all the sin, you don't know where I was at last night, you don't know what I did. God still loves you perfectly, it's unconditional love. It's the seed of God. It's the never ending, never changing, never dying love that before you was even saved, born again, he loved you before you was even in the womb. And when you understand that love, it'll get rid of fear. Well, if God loved me perfectly, he gonna take care of me. That's what I've been trying to tell you. No evil shall be. Ain't no virus coming now where I dwell. God loves me. Hallelujah. And perfect the Lord cast out fear. Hallelujah. I cast that thought down. I'm not gonna lose my house. Hallelujah. I'm not gonna foreclose. Why? God loves me. Love will make a way. You see what I'm saying? Praise God. I'm not going to worry about those children. I'm going to go to bed and sleep good tonight. Yeah, but you know they're on drugs. They're out there party. What if? No, nope, no. Nope. Great shall be the peace of my children. And by the way, God loves me perfectly. And I'm going to let love take care of my kids. I cast my care over on love. God is love. And, and Satan can't get you to fear because if he can get you to fear, he can torment you. Oh, what if they get die tonight? Oh, what if you don't get the money? Oh, what if you get, that's torment. All they got is fear. And the Bible says perfected love cast out fear. Well, then if it casts out fear, that's the only thing that, that can build is faith. The opposite of fear is faith. And if all fear has been removed, then your faith can grow. Faith work it by love. And the more you understand, God loves you perfectly. I, it took me years. I thought, because, you know, we can't love perfectly. I've tried it. And that don't mean we don't strive toward it. We make mistakes. But we, we pick our stuff up, up, and we want to perfect God's love in us. That's talking about the perfect love God has for you. He's the only one that can love you perfectly. Better than your husband, better than your wife, better than your boyfriend, but better than your girlfriend. It's unconditional love. When all else fail, love will still be there, praise God. Because it's a perfect love. And that's the only one love that you can trust that will get rid of fear. Hallelujah. Perfected love, he says here, will cast out fear because fear has torment. Look at this from the Amplified. It says here, there is no fear in love. Why? God is saying no fear in God. Are you kidding me? Well, where's God? He's right here. Ain't no fear in me. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, God, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. I don't have to fear the coronavirus. I don't have to fear uh, the economic downturn. I don't have to fear job loss. I don't have to fear all of this stuff that's coming on this planet. Why? Uh, the Bible says there is no fear in love. Dread does not exist, but full grown, complete Perfect love, once you develop faith in that love, the way that perfect love God, the way he loves you, will turn fear out the doors and expel every trace of terror. For fear bring with it, and this is where people mess up, the thought of punishment. They think God is still punishing them because of something they did back here, the mistake they made. Uh, I did this sin. I got high. I, I, I went to that R-rated movie. I did whatever. No, no. God laid all the punishment on Jesus. He's more around. And he loves us. And said, so you don't have to be tormented in your mind. For he that is afraid has not reached the full maturity. If you still fear the virus going to come on you, you, don't under, you, you haven't perfected, you don't understand the perfect love God has for you. Your faith hasn't grown, and it won't grow till you understand that love. It's not yet grown up into love's complete perfection. Praise God. Look at this statement right here I want to make. Then understanding in God's love, God's perfect love for you, will cast all fear out of your life. Once you understand God's perfect love. Amen. God loves me. And it 
took me years to understand this. As we would bleed God for buildings and the enemy would say, you're not going to make it. You ain't going to have enough money this time. What if the people leave? What if you fail? What if you start, break ground, bulldozing, all of that stuff? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do the television? All the enemy has is fear. But perfected love will cast out fear. When you understand God loves me perfectly. And that's why you need to confess every day. God loves me just like Jesus. What are you perfecting the love of God? And the more you perfect that love, the more the flow toward other people. Begin, you realize God didn't give me what I deserve. He gave me mercy, so I'm going to give other people mercy. I'm going to look beyond their fault because he looked beyond my fault. The same love that he has toward you, you begin to perfect it in your own life toward other people. And you begin to look and have compassion. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll touch this in a minute, but that was the whole motive behind every miracle Jesus did. And Jesus would move with compassion and heal the sick. He was moved with compassion and said, stretch forth your hand, be thou made whole. He was moved with compassion and took the two feet. Notice what's moving him, the love of God. Every time you see love, act, you see miracle power release. Hallelujah. And so understanding God's perfect love for him releases power, his reason, whatever it takes, love never fails. It'll cast fear out of, out of your life. That's what 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says. Look at this. Love, that's all I need, never fail. It never fades, nor become obsolete or comes to the end. Who is love? God is love. Love won't fail you. Love will get you the money. Love won't let you die with some type of sickness and disease. Love will take care of your children. You just need to bleed the love. You need to put faith in that love. And he loves you just like he does Jesus, praise God. He didn't let Jesus fail, did he? He didn't let Jesus stay in the tomb, did he? He didn't let Jesus be overcome by the No, he protect, he will raise you up. It's the same type of love that he has for me that he does for Jesus. And love never fails. So that means love will find a way. Love will get the money. Love will pay the house off. Love will get you a job. Love will get your groceries this month. Love, ha, but you need to stop putting faith in the love. How? God loves me just like he does Jesus. Hallelujah. And faith is out there working. Praise God. Bring it in my money. Bring it in my children. Bring it in manifestation. The rest of that is all good. All that other stuff, he said, will come to end. But love is never becomes obsolete. Why? God is love. God is love. God is love. Can you see God failing? No, I can't. Well, God is right here. Perfect the love, cast out fear. I dwell in love and can dwell, love God dwell in me. And because God don't fail, I'm not going to fail. How, I begin to say, hallelujah, I never fail. Why? Because of the God in me. I'm putting confidence in the God that's in me, praise God. And there is no fear. There's no fear to build buildings. There's no fear to believe God and do what God has called you to do. Fear causes you to stagger at the promises. Faith reach for the promise. Let's close, close with Ephesians chapter 6. Actually, chapter 3. Ephesians 3, verse 14 through 20. And I'm just going to read this from the King James. And it's all about the love of God. Paul was praying that the church would get a revelation of this love. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 16. For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father, through 20 actually. <laughs> for, for this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant unto you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit were in your inner man. Here it is, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. But how does faith work? By love. That you being rooted and grounded in love. He said, I want the faith, Christ dwelling in your heart by faith. But you, in order for your faith to work, you got to be rooted and grounded securely in love, the Amplified said. And once you begin to get developed in that love and rooted and grounded in love, look, 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 look what he prayed. That you may be able to comprehend with the preachers. Comprehend with some, no, with all the saints. This is for every born again saint. God wants you to understand this love. What is the breadth? How, how deep? The length? How long? The depth? How far it goes? And the height? I mean, love has no limits. God is love. And when you begin to comprehend and understand that God loves me, your faith, you'll be rooted and grounded securely in faith and strengthened on the inside. Why God loves me? That you may be able to comprehend with all the saints, the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, 
and to know. God wants you to know by experience the love of Christ, which past natural not. It don't even make sense. Stuff that we done done. Many times we done missed it. Stuff that we've allowed in our life and God just keep loving us, loving us over and over. Natural knowledge can't even grasp the love of God. That passive natural knowledge that you might be filled, wow, with the fullness of love himself. Well, if I'm filled with the fullness of love, God is love. And, and the Bible says perfected, perfected love cast out fear. So if God is love and God has said I'm filled with God, there is no fear. There is no fear. God has not given me a spirit of fear. God wants me to be filled with the fullness of God. Now, once you begin to comprehend with all the saints, that love, understand that love, you begin to reach out. And like I said, I remember when I was confessing God loves me the same as he does Jesus. My natural mind, natural knowledge was trying to know, no, but then it finally dropped in my spirit. Yes, he does. And once you tap into that, praise God, your faith begin to operate on the highest level. And look at the end result of that. Verse 20. Now unto him, him who God, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. What power? A revelation of that love. Hallelujah. Christ in you, your hope of glory. That, that power, that love working in He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. In other words, your thinking and asking will not exceed the, the knowledge of your love that you that God has for you. If you think God don't love you, well, I, you know, I, I just better ask for that two room. I mean, you know, I'm just asking for apartment because I don't believe God going to give me that 12 room house. He don't love. See, you can't think you think he don't love you that much. God says I can do exceedingly above all you ask to think. But your asking and thinking is going to be. Come on. Based off of the love that you believe God has for you. If you think God really just don't want to give you that nice car anyway, you know, I mean, you can get whatever car you want. But you ain't not going to reach out and believe for some expensive car. I just want a car. It's based off of your love. When, when we were building this church, which is nice, pews, we did it debt free. Three buildings. I mean, the Family Life Center. All the exercise equipment. We got life cycles over there. We got treadmills. We got full basketball court. We got nice equipment. All three buildings are nice. Well, I begin to, that's because I believe God loved me. And even though it's going to take millions of dollars, my accent and thinking was big because my revelation of God's love for me was big. You can't exceed asking or thinking above your revelation how much God loves you. But now he's able to do. He can exceed. I remember my son, I'll say this, Tory, in his first year in college, because he's been a good kid, never gave me any problem. And uh, he uh, was working and he had and needed his books for his quarter and, and his job, something happened with his job. And he said, Daddy, could you give me three, send me $300 till I get my books for this quarter? I'll pay you back at that work. And I said, okay, well, when he asked you $300, I sent him five. Why did I send him five? Because I love him. It exceeded what he asked. See, God said, you're asking for, for a five-room house. I'll, I'll give you a ten-room. I'm going to always exceed because I love you. <laughs> My love has no boundaries. It's exceedingly abundant above all you can ask or think. In other words, our only limitation is, is our imagination. Praise God. And so I want to give this last statement here then. God's love then is... The motivation behind everything he does for us. Everything he does for us. Because he loves you. Not because you deserved it. He's able to do. Notice he's doing it. And he exceeds. Hallelujah. You asked for this. And he gave you something better. <laughs> he, he, he exceeded what you asked for. Why? Because he loved you. He just wanted to show you that I love you. The reason I did the extra because I love you. Praise God. God's love then is the motivation behind everything he does for us. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 as we close. But God, so rich in his mercy, and because of it, in, in order to satisfy the great, wonderful, intense love which he loved us with, 
Even when we were dead, going to hell, our trespasses and sins, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship with union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself. What's called here to do it? Love. To satisfy this love. The same new life which he quickened for him, praise God, by grace are and, and favor and mercy, are you saved? Hallelujah. Which you did not deserve. You were saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Glory be to God. God bless you. We love you much. You be blessed, praise God, as we close now. I just wanted to show you God loves you. And, and, and if you believe that I love you, he said, come before me and ask. I dare, the Amplified says, what you even dare to ask, dream or think. God loves you, and there's nothing that love will not do for you. Love is going to take care of you, your family, your home. Your children, praise God, and your faith will begin to operate in its highest level. Remember, you can call the church anytime. We're still operable. Amen. The church and ministry is still going on. Any questions about anything, call the church between 7.30 and uh, uh, a.m. and 3.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. And we're here to pray for you and do everything, praise God, we can. Until we come again, praise God, into the sanctuary. This is Pastor Diz on behalf of me and George Shea, and we're praying for you. We love you. God bless you. See you on Tuesday night, 730.